welcome to the Women Leaders Association podcast, where we believe we go further, faster, and have more fun when we go together. Be sure to tune in each week to hear an empowering message from the world's top women executives, trailblazers, entrepreneurs, and all around fierce female leaders. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland, and I will be taking you on a deep dive of each message to equip you with the principles, strategies, and tools you need to start crushing your goals, increasing your impact, creating work-life harmony, and did I mention have more fun? Because when you love what you do, you do it better. The Women Leaders Association is the world's largest women executives association with over 30,000 women in executive and leadership positions who are committed to the development and advancement of women in the corporate arena. If you would like to get involved in a Women Leaders Association chapter, would enjoy daily podcasts, or you desire to become a part of the Women's Mastermind Group near you, simply go to womenleaderspodcast.com. Now let's tune in for this incredible message. On today's episode, hear from Nancy Lyons. Nancy is the CEO and co-founder of Clockwork, and she challenges people to unleash their potential and harness the human side of business by showing up different. Nancy is also the author of Work Like a Boss. We are so excited to bring Nancy on today. Welcome, Nancy. I'm so excited you're here. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's great. So let's get started. First, I want to know how your company of clockwork, how that came about? Like what was the motivation behind that company? Well, uh, my business partners and I had another company. So we got involved in internet technology um, in the nineties, right? You know, right out of college, although Mike and Chuck worked for Prince at Paisley Park. And so they started to explore technology on behalf of Prince when he was starting to think about how he could have a direct channel to his fans. Um, and Chuck has these great stories of explaining the internet to Prince and, um, having him, he said, you know, you could almost see the little light bulb go off in his head where he was like, you mean I can talk directly to my fans? (laughs) Um, and so, uh, they were the ones who sort of started the technology piece of it. And then we connected and they had a company called Bitstream Underground. I started to work for them. Eventually I became a partner, then the general manager of that company, and then the president. And the um, the company started as an internet service provider, um, but they started building websites for corporate clients in 1995, if you can believe wow. that. So really early in the conversation. That company was sold. And when we sold it, what we realized is that there was this massive gap in the sort of mainstream um, uh, understanding of what was possible on the internet. So our last company had been acquired by an organization that really had sort of a limited understanding of what we could do. And, uh, you know, I, I, I am fairly confident that I am older than you. So you may not remember this, but um, you know, when we started, we were young, we were upstarts. There weren't any college degrees that really um, focused on this work. Um, We were self-taught, you know, Mike and Chuck were musicians. I was a a artist, musician type person. I'd worked in food service and, you know, whatever. So we were self-taught. And, and what we realized is that in order to do this work ethically and our and and deliver real value for our clients, um, we kind of needed to start over. Mm-hmm. And uh, sticking with that new company that had been acquired just didn't align with our values because at the time and for a very long time, the internet was like the rotten stepchild. Right. Um, but you know what I mean? Where right. we weren't included in the strategic conversations. It was not a business force. They just sort of threw orders over a fence and said, all right, you grubby kids, make this thing happen. Right. And we saw a future where the internet was first, right? Where digital first was the way people were thinking. And that's what we wanted to do. And those are the clients we wanted to have. So we started Clockwork in 2002, not as a startup, but as a start over in order to really, truly partner with our clients in creating these digital first business properties. Oh, I love that. And I love this quote I got from um, a client of yours. It says, what I like most about clockwork is first, they are humans who care about humans. (laughs) Second, they are experts at what they do. And third, they define their success by your success. I am talking with, you know, women leaders all the time. Mm-hmm. And the conversations around just how much, you know, 
robots and AI and all, all of this artificial type work is starting to, you know, take the place of humans. I'm like, humans still matter, still do. <laughs> we can utilize all this technology to our advantage and at the same time, still be humans connecting with other humans. <laughs> so I love that y'all are focused on that. Absolutely. In fact, I, I just had an article come out today about AI and your business. Um, I think that's the title of the piece. We sent it out in our newsletter. It's on our website. And it really addresses those questions. You know, the how much should I worry about AI? What are the security risks of AI? How can AI actually help or enhance my business? Yeah. We address all of those things. But I think the number one thing that I would say to other business owners that are really grappling with the AI question is, or, you know, people ask me all the time, do I have to worry about AI taking over my business or taking my job? And I always say, you don't have to worry about AI taking your job or really threatening your business, but you do have to worry about other businesses that are already embracing AI. That's right. So it's really about gaining a comfort mm -hmm. with that technology and recognizing where it can enhance what you're already doing versus fearing it, which right. is sort of the history we have with tech, right? Like right. people fear tech and they distance themselves from it. Right. And then they find out later on, it's not really going anywhere. And we might want to get right. on this bus. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe it's time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. it's time. Well, it's so funny. You know, <laughs> I saw a meme the other day that was like a line of dominoes and, you know, half the line had fallen down and there was a hand and then the other half was still standing up. And it was like, um, you know, what happened in Terminator <laughs> was all the dominoes mm -hmm. that fell down. And then the hand was like me saying, please. And thank you to chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> truly, it's truly. So yes. It's yes. Like still embracing it. You know what I mean? And like not fearing it and, and using it to our advantage. And I just thought that was really funny because so many people do have that Terminator like fear. Of Absolutely. Technology. But, you know, we can never replace humans. We are complex. Right. Mm -hmm. We have emotional intelligence. Yeah. We understand each other. We have empathy. Robots will right. never have empathy. Right. And so I think it's just about remembering who's in control, That's which is right. what they forgot, you know, in Terminator, which is what they forgot in Repo Man. That's the other one that comes up a lot. Right. It's like, who's who's driving? Right. And it needs to be us, which yeah. means we need to get in the driver's seat ASAP. Yeah, I love that. So, you know, being a woman growing up in in this field and having to be so self-taught, what has been your experience like fitting into, you know, a majority male dominated field? Yeah, I I I think we hear a lot about male dominated fields. And, um, you know, because they all were right. We're all we've all come up in male dominated fields because they all were. But I will say this one was particularly interesting because, um, you know, first of all, I, I, I'm I'm a woman, but I'm also sort of gender nonconforming in that. I don't, you know, it, it, we just found a, a bunch of headshots from when we were running Bitstream and I was dressed just like the guys, you know, it was, we we're all, we're all Gen Xers. We were all sort of, you know, uh, uh, looking like um, slackers in uh, <laughs> those, those pictures. So we were all wearing flannel. It was just a <laughs> sea of flannel, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, yeah, it was pretty funny. We all had long, long hair and a sea of flannel and it didn't matter if it was, it was men or women. So I didn't really show up in those corporate conversations early on fitting the mold of the women that were accepted and invited into those rooms. Mm. So it wasn't even just that it was male dominated. It was also that I wasn't wearing the right shoes or the right suit or the right whatever. And, you know, early on, I worked really hard, not necessarily to conform, but to bring the appropriate amount of substance mm. to be taken seriously. So I had to know my stuff, right? right. Yeah. And that's what I tell people all the time. You know, people say to me, how did you gain the confidence you have? Competence is yes, the secret to yes. confidence, right? <laughs> yes. and, exactly. And so um, it was, it, 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 I will say it wasn't easy but it was worth it. Mm -hmm. And now uh, in my old age, um, I can say that uh, I try to be a voice for other women. Like even right now in all of my speaking and writing and what have you, I often find myself reminding rooms of men 
what it's like to be a woman. You know, just yeah. last week I was in a room, um, a global organization had a leadership summit and flew their leaders in from all different corners of, of the planet. And um, it was mostly men. There were about three women in the room. Wow. And when I told them again, what I often share, um, you know, how much harder it is for women. Women are bearing the lion's share of what's happening at home mm -hmm. with children, with families. Yeah. They are still sort of crawling out of this, you know, post pandemic haze and trying to right. find balance, which is a myth. It's and, a myth. <laughs> um, right. It's a, to I mean, it's all life. It's not right. work or life. It's That's all right. our lives yes. that we're, mm -hmm. that we're struggling with. And, um, and so I, I really see myself as a champion of those conversations in rooms full of men. Cause I earned that social capital and yeah. I'm going to use it to champion women. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, gosh, you said so many like mic drop moments, but <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I, no, I love that. I love that. Like, this is a real conversation that's so important right now. And I think, you know, a lot of what you've been through and, and you earned that competence, like you've earned that position. And, and I, just like we started talking before we hit record about like the clothes that we're wearing, right. You're wearing a t-shirt. I'm wearing a long sleeve hoodie t-shirt. Cause it just won't stop raining here. And, and we said, you know, this doesn't affect how we show up. It doesn't mm -hmm. affect the degree of our conversation and how important it can be. And I, I love that. And I am all about helping women to realize like right now, I have five children <laughs> in the other room. I have six kids total, but one is at camp, but wow. I have five children in the other room. Right. And it's like, I, yes, they're going to make noise. They just drop mm -hmm. dishes. Like it's just, <laughs> it's just going to happen. And there shouldn't be a, Oh, I'm so sorry. And Oh, this is, you know, this is so unprofessional because this is how work is continuing. And absolutely. And this, this field that we're in. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I actually think that, um, you know, what you just described is what the majority of women are, are trying to manage right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I also tell people, and this is um, <clears throat> not something you asked me, but, uh, but I'm going to say it anyway, Do you it. know, the other sort of magical thing that I have is a wife. Mm. And I think that most humans don't realize that whenever there's a successful person in the household, there's probably somebody behind them um, supporting that work right. and enabling that work and taking care of the things that they perhaps don't have the bandwidth to take care of. Yeah. And I believe that wives and partners have been doing that work all along. But now, you know, uh, in the last 50 years, women have been showing up as equals mm -hmm. in the in the out of home and i i say that knowing that quoted. the pandemic has changed <laughs> it all right, right. Um, <clears throat> but in the out of home career building mm -hmm. and still managing all those things they've forever managed and i tell people all the time it doesn't matter if you marry prince charming right. you know i mean he can be the most amazing human being ever yeah. it is different for women Mm -hmm. It is different for women. And we get to say that out loud yeah. and ask for what we need yeah. to manage all of those things. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love the, the degree of the boldness, you know, to say, this is what we need. And I think so often, depending on, you know, kind of how you grew up and, and the, the systems that you're in, you know, I see a lot of, I lead a lot of women's masterminds, right? And we see a lot of fear and trepidation to come into those circles of highly influential women because of this like mean girl syndrome that happened back in high school that they're still hanging on to, you know, and it's like that, that doesn't have to exist anymore. Like we've got to start changing the conversations and being bold enough to say, you know what, this isn't what it's about we can actually tap into our power and support one another and encourage one another. And like, that's why I love being in masterminds because it it is, it's like you're in this whole posse of women mm -hmm. who get it and who support you, you know? And I mm -hmm. love that. It's totally true. I still have a little demon that sits on my shoulder. I walk in the rooms. I do the, the job. I, you know, I, I show up. 
but I still have a demon who tries to convince me that I won't fit in. Yeah. Um, and I don't care who you are, or how old you get. We all have those. We all have that negative self-talk, that seed yes. that was planted when we were young. Yep. And I also think women were fed a line of garbage that suggested that in order for any one of us to get ahead, we have to sabotage others it's, instead of supporting each other. Is garbage. And it is, isn't it? And I think men were trained, you know, it's the whole foxhole mentality. We're in this together. I will protect right. you. You will protect me. Right. And, you know, teamwork. Um, whereas women were were sort of fed this line that there can only be one. And in order for that one to exist, the rest of us must die. <laughs> and I, I right. And and I think I I I think the best the best moments I've experienced in my life is showing up in support of other women, yeah. making their dreams happen, making their careers larger than life, yeah. supporting, you know, women who are doing amazing work in all business and industry. Right. Those are some of the most rewarding relationships I have and some of the most rewarding moments I get to witness. And Absolutely. I just always want to encourage women to do exactly what you said, just show yeah. up for each other yeah. in support yeah you know, in, enthusiastically yes. um, cheering because there's room for all of us yes. and we all do better when we all do better. It's so true. It's so true. You know, I compare it to, and this is such a silly, you know, illustration, but it like totally clicked for me. It would be if we were in the same room having this conversation, right. And I stopped breathing because I was going to take too much air from you. Like it's that stupid. <laughs> Think right. about it. Like, no, we all you. have room to make it where we want to go. Your vision and your dreams are different than mine, mm -hmm. you know? And there, it, I don't have to sacrifice my vision and my dreams to help you achieve yours. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, it, it's interesting how our different stories play into how we show up and who we are. You know, you have six kids. That's fascinating to me. I have one and that is enough. <laughs> um, and I, but I think um, I always learn from people who have these different life experiences yeah. and who have different challenges and struggles and, and show up empowered yeah. in, not in spite of it, but because right. of it, right? Yes. Like the lessons you learn from those six humans that yeah. you get to shape um, would be valuable to me if I'm open yes. to just, you know, meeting people where they are and supporting their individual journey. Yes. And, you know, back to our conversation we were having earlier about the, the whole work-life balance myth, and it's, it's all life, right? It's all of who we are. Um, I have a TED talk coming up in September, which is about the full integration of all of who we are, mm. you know, and like, yes, more of that, please. I but love it. part of what I see happen so often is, you know, when I'm a mom, I wear this hat, when I'm a CEO, I wear this hat. And just recently, I flew to Washington to do a, a VIP day with some of my clients and I brought my 14 year old son with me and we, you know, did some museums, the history, all that stuff. Um, and I brought him into that three and a half hour time with two of my clients. And after about an hour and a half, I was like, you can go upstairs to the room, you know, like you're 14, you, you know, are you getting bored? And he was like, this is amazing. Like he was wow. so captivated at the level of conversation that was happening because we were talking about goals and ideas and like all these important things that that's what teenagers need to be around, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you are a mom around and your kids are around, bring them into it, mm -hmm. allow your power as a mom to also feed your power as a leader and vice versa. Like that's where integration comes into play. Oh, for sure. And I love that you brought your son. Um, was it a, was it a women's group? It was, women it was a husband and wife duo. Their clients oh, okay. that I brought too. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Because I do think, um, you know, I have a 17 year old son and, um, and I do think part of my job is to ensure that he works to break some yeah. of those myths and assumptions yeah. and he sees women as fully human and yeah. fully capable, right? Yeah. Like part of our jobs in bringing our young people into these experience with us is to break 
you know, to break, to, to, to rewrite the stories Mm -hmm. that have dictated what opportunities are available to us. That's right. And, and I, I love that we bring our daughters to work, but I also think we have to show up with our sons and show them the role that they're going to play in the future of opportunity. Yes. Because there's also, you know, on the flip side, this whole, like, girl power movement, if I'm going to, you know, label it as that it's, it's not to demonize men or to disempower men. Like that's where, no, you can, mm-hmm. we can still stand in our power that has nothing to do with them. Mm-hmm. You know, like we don't have, just like, we don't have to put each other down. We don't have to put other people down. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Period. End of story. Absolutely. I wouldn't have the career I have if it weren't for men right. who saw things in me yeah. that I wouldn't have seen in myself. Yeah. Um, so I, I always say that, like, even as I'm stating some of these truths that might be invisible to some people about the experience that women have in the workplace, I also want to say, you know, it, it, it it's not about blame or shame. Right. It's about just illuminating these realities that we all know are there so that we can all participate in shifting that narrative. Yes. And that is so the key I'm mean, in everything in life, right? Like we can learn, we can be inspired. We can be, oh, have all those moments of breakthrough, but until we implement the change, mm-hmm. there's not going to be any. Mm-hmm. And so many people will get to the point of like, yeah, you know, I totally agree. La 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 la. Right. <laughs> they don't, they don't do anything about it. <laughs> right. Right. And we have to we have to ask for what we want, but we also have to ask that those people who have power recognize that tiny gestures, small changes can make significant difference. Yeah. And so I, I think it is important to recognize who has the power and yeah. what do we need from them? Ask right. for what we need. That's right. Absolutely. And to know, again, back to our, our conversation very early on, that is the power of humanity. Mm -hmm. and of still having empathy to be able to connect with people on a different level. You know, you said you were an artist. Did you paint all those behind you? No, that's a virtual backdrop. You're just not seeing my laundry. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, no. We could have total laundry stories. We're not going to go there. (laughs) Right. Yeah. If it weren't for virtual backdrops, I'm not sure what I would do. Um, but, But that's the thing is that we all have these different parts and we are multifaceted and it's so cool when we can find those, those little moments of like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm a painter too, or, oh my gosh, I'm a, you know, musician too, or, oh, I love technology. And just those little moments of like connection, true connection, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and that's where we can really start to build upon and say, you know what, we're really not that much different, but in the areas that we are different, like I'm going to work in my strength and I'm going to encourage you to work in your strength and your strength might, you know, compensate for my weakness. And then therefore we make a really good team. Oh yeah. I mean, you can apply that thinking across a variety of spaces, right? Like I think, and obviously I don't want to dive too deeply into this, but I actually think we are as politically divided as we are as a nation because everybody feels unseen and unheard. You know, people want, I mean, there's the extremes, which we don't have to get into, but I do think people, all people want to feel safe and heard and valued um, and, and seen. And that's where this sort of crisis moment in time is coming from. Right. And that's where empathy and the power of humanity is so important and we need to find it. Well, yes. We're not going to solve this problem and it's not about political parties solving it. Absolutely, Nancy, you are speaking so much truth. It, it, yes. Yes. <laughs> Mic yes. dropped in yeah. a story. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> because you're a thousand percent correct. You know, valued people value people. Exactly. Exactly. It's so true. And I, w- I I wish we were having different conversations. I wish there was more freedom yeah. to get past that sort of political line and just find each other. Right. It just, I, right. I just, I, I think it's, it's tragic what's happening and it's all about just sort of lack of humanity. Yep. It's like, yes, let's focus on everything that we don't agree on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that, exactly. that finds us. Like, are you kidding me? That's so stupid. Exactly. 
Exactly. Oh, and I maintain man. that all humans are good and valuable because they were born, yeah. not because of their title, their set of accomplishments, right. not because of how they show up in the world. It's right. just because they're just because they're, they're here. They're here. They're here. Yes. Yeah. Value. Look at us. I'm coming oh. to Georgia. Nancy, We're come BFFs on. We're BFFs now. Let's We're go BFFs. start. A, That's what's let's happening. Let's go start a, you know, conference. Come on, Nancy. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Because there is, and there needs to be more of these conversations happening. Mm -hmm. You know, there does. There really does. Mm -hmm. Everybody is so, I mean, gosh, if you spend five minutes and I have to limit my time on any kind of social platform. Truth. Because it's just like the extreme of everything. And you're like, no wonder the world is so confused because Mm -hmm. that's all that's being presented, Mm -hmm. you know? until Mm -hmm. conversations like this and we need more. Absolutely. And we just have to make sure that we amplify them, you know, and, and, and repeat ourselves. Right. I feel like half my life is just about being redundant. It's like, where do I have an opportunity to say this again? Because if we spark interest in one person and they bring that discussion to their community, we might be making change. It may be invisible for a while, but I, I do think we have to say this stuff out loud. Yeah. And, you know, it reminds me so much of being in school and especially in high school. And like, they just drilled into us, you know, copyright infringement. Like you can't take somebody else's idea and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I think some people still have that fear of like, if they heard this particular episode, right. And they're like, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this is such great conversation that it could be, you know, infringing on, you know, the copyright laws and blah, 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 by sharing this idea. And that's just simply not true. Like we, there are going to be people that only can hear this message through Nancy. Mm -hmm. There are going to be people that can only hear this message through Sue or Mm -hmm. Mary or me, you know, and that's just how it goes. You have a voice, you have a story, you have perception that nobody else has. Like you are Mm -hmm. completely unique in who you are. And like that, we want to hear it from you, your voice, Mm -hmm. your perception. And, and again, to really empower other people to step into who, all of who they are and use Mm -hmm. all of who they are to make this world a better place. Cause it can happen, Nancy. I, I believe it can. I just think we have to swirl toward rock bottom before we find ourselves (laughs) wanting to claw our way out. Yeah, we're doing a great job. A great job. And you know what I also think is sort of sad is that I have conversations like this and nobody wants to be there. You know, I mean, this is not, and and to your point, I think the reason that these conversations are important in sparking other people's thinking right. and discussion and sharing in community is because that's the only way we're going to make change. Nobody owns um, a new direction, right? right. We're right. all, we all need to be part of it. Yes. And that's where that copyright discussion just sort of loses steam. Nobody owns a desire to be better. Right. We that's all right. need to push us towards better yes. because if we don't, we'll never get there. Yes. And I've been, and you know, and there are back to the mastermind conversations when you are around people who get it and, mm-hmm. you know, you have these elevated conversations. Cause I've been in conversations with dear friends of mine, you know, and they're, you know, complaining about the president or whatever. And I'm like wishing ill of the person or persons or whoever is leading our country, no matter what year you, you fall into, mm-hmm. it's like, wishing the pilot flying the plane that you are on. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I absolutely agree. I may not agree with some politics, but I don't want, I don't want anything bad or worse to happen to us. And I, I couldn't agree more. I want them to be successful. Um, But again, I mean, I I think there's also just sort of this fundamental lack of understanding of how these things work and how our energy plays a role in it. You know, Um, if we continue to just sort of repeat the negative stuff, then that's what we're going to attract right back. And I I, I feel like we just have we have more power than that. We should be oscillating at a higher frequency than that. And I, I, I think, you know, we have a responsibility just to push us in a, in a better, more positive direction. All of us. I agree. I agree. Nancy, this has been such a great conversation. What is one last piece of advice that you would give, um, to the woman right now who feels like, 
I, I love this conversation. I love what y'all are saying. How do I start? Mm. What would you tell her? Boy, there's so much I would tell her. Call me. Um, <laughs> but I think, you know, one of the things that I encourage people to do all the time, I mean, we have this language where we talk about manifesting the things that we want. Where do I start? Whatever. You know, we encourage people to write business plans. And in those business plans, we make them think through every aspect of the business they want. I always try to encourage people to think about their personal plan, their personal yeah. business plan. Where do I start? What do you want? And yes. really the sky's the limit. What do you want? Sit down and think about what you want, articulate it yeah. in a way that makes sense to you, and then start to pull it apart in in into sort of tiny achievable milestones. You know, um, I, I really believe that we have... Um, you know, the, the un, unlimited opportunity, but we have to set the course. That's up to us. And maybe the first thing in your plan is I'm going to talk to these four successful people. I'm going to reach out and have lunch and ask them about their start. And I'm going to take a nugget from each conversation okay. and apply it to my own, or I'm going to take what resonates and apply it to my plan. And I'm going to build my plan over X amount of time, but that can become a roadmap. Yes. for what we need, for what I need to actually move forward. I think we spend a lot of time thinking about what if or comparing ourselves to Instagram stories that aren't true or, you know, wanting more things because that's what social media tells us. But we don't spend the same amount of energy and time just really sitting down and approaching it in a super analog way and and being honest with ourselves about what we want and deciding that we deserve it and then creating a roadmap to get to it. And I think that's a great way to start. And honestly, I think if you are thoughtful and planful, you can manifest what you want. Absolutely. I mean, that's so true. And I think also women especially are very clear with what they don't want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we tend to just mm -hmm. go that way, but to really sit. And I think that's also uh, a challenge is to sit. The, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with rest. There's nothing wrong with sitting and being a part of your thoughts, cluing into your thoughts. Mm -hmm. You're not on autopilot all the time. Like the power of your own thoughts is mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. Get in tune with what you're thinking about. And mm -hmm. really, like you were saying, write down, what do you want? Mm -hmm. And then start with that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I think it's so important. And you're absolutely right. Be still. Yeah. Be still. Take some stillness. You know, give yourself time to craft it, edit, rewrite. Yeah. Um, you, you, I think it's remarkable what you find when you give yourself space to find it. Yes. And space to fail. You know, Absolutely. That's so huge. And I just, mm -hmm. I wish more and more people understood that it's like, who said failing was bad? I would like to, whoever originated that thought. <laughs> we need to well, go and especially with, with women, right? Yeah. I think women were, were, I think women, I think we've all been trained from a very young age that perfection mm. is the only acceptable deliverable, whatever it is, right? Whatever it is. And perfection is actually not really possible. No, and it's not a gross. real thing. Nope. <laughs> right? So right. we're already screwed from right. the very first lesson. Right. We're already screwed. And right. I think women have to recognize that finished um, is generally not really possible either. You know, I mean, the internet has changed all of our expectations around done, right? right. And so I think we have to give ourselves a break and failure is good because those are lessons learned and you know why do we avoid change or avoid trying something new or avoid moving into a new space because of our fear of failure and yet any opportunity to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone is an opportunity for growth right. as is failure right you want freedom it's on the other side of failure my friend <laughs> absolutely <laughs> that's a goodie that's yeah. a goodie yeah. So good. So good. Nancy, this has been great. We need to be the best friends. <laughs> yes, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm on my way. Don't be I scared. Love it. Next time I'm in Minneapolis. I'm, I'm you must up. call me. Yeah, I will. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Wonderful. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Nancy. Bye for now. 
Be sure to check out all of our show notes to see how you can connect with Nancy further. And if you're looking to get involved with the Women Leaders Association and find a chapter near you, head over to womenleaderspodcast.com. That's womenleaderspodcast.com.